So I'm going to um, call the informational meeting uh, about the gravel pit bond to order. Um, first item is, and, uh, sorry, it's also and the 2023 town meeting informational hearing prior to the actual town meeting. Um, so first item is to summarize the gravel pit bond vote. So we are uh, asking the voters to weigh in on a, the proposed purchase of a gravel pit on Route 14 North, uh, heading towards Craftsbury on the left, just before you get to Lake Elago, currently owned by Ken Davis. Um, we have had um, a consultant come and do inventory testings uh, to see what how much material is there currently how much material is under the ground to check out what material is available within the parts that are permitted so um, there's an existing act 250 permit it was just renewed in 2021 it's good for 20 years um, so uh, in the summary of our analysis is that it's a net benefit to the town because we're going to get more material out of it than it costs us to buy the land and extract the material. So it's going to be cheaper for us. Um, it also secures our source of winter sand and uh, gravel for a number of years. Oh, I should say, the whole reason we went down this path is because our current gravel pit is projected to be out of gravel in a year or two. This yeah. year's our last year. This oh, year this year's our last year? So we're yeah. Right okay. This, they weren't coming. Yeah. yeah. Pretty yeah. close. Yes. Yeah. So that's my summary. Oh, rise. Yes, Eric, you said for a number of years. Is there a specific number of years? Our bet? This no, year? No, no. The one hundred fourteen. Thirty. Thirty plus. Thirty plus. Thirty plus. Thirty plus. Yeah. Um, 30, so 20 years on the current um, Act 250 permit, but there's estimated to be 30 plus years of material there. So we'd have to um, apply for another extension if we got past that 20 years. And how long would the bond be for? 20. And the yearly payment? That's for Casey. Um, the first year is interest only because of the timing. Right. Um, like 18,000 ish. After that, the payments start at 47,000 a year. Um, and they go down each year. Right. Okay. 47 being the highest, yes. More questions? Yes. You said sand and gravel? Yeah. Could you state your name, please? Steve, Jenny. Yeah, sand and gravel. So um, I, my understanding is that the procedure would be similar to our current gravel pit where we would screen the material coming out. Um, screen it for sand and uh, crush the larger material into the gravel pile, more or less. Danny? Yes, and uh, there's also uh, a ledge there that will be manufactured, cord, so it'll be like stay mat, like monoxious material. Um, if you drive it, if you're familiar with it from the road, the sand that will screen is to the left and the ledge is to the right. So eventually, once we use up, there's not a huge amount of good gravel there. It's basically sand and then manufactured material from the ledge. And we would contract out all that. Uh, Which, like, we have, just as we do now, basically the operator is the same yeah. way as this one. Right, we contract out the crushing now. And then some of the buildings. Mike, can you speak? Michael Brochu. I just, the overall cost analysis. Okay, she just said interest only. It's five hundred thousand dollars, twenty years. What's the total payout? Because in the case of a loan, percentage and stuff, you got man hours. Yep. Equipment. Is there equipment included in this purchase? You need to bring your own because the, the proximity there. for yeah. a bucket loader, yeah, or the I'll town's going to ask for a new bucket loader. I can answer those questions. Manpower hours in a year, mm -hmm. separate from the contracted work. Mm -hmm. I've just been discussing this with my son who does some pit work. Yes. And honestly, he says, there's people that own pits. Why don't you just buy the material as needed? Because there's also a projection in my mind that the manpower we got now, you could be two short people 
in five or ten years and not have enough manpower to do the roads and are, play are with saying, a pet. Are you saying we have an aging, uh, uh, aging saying, demographic? I'm saying that the road crew is going to change like every police department and every state oh, yeah. agency that I'm thinking ahead that just buy a material by the year from the people that already own the pits as far as Fry or if it's Mooresville or wherever yeah. and not go into a piece of property with property taxes. It's in Greensboro, it's tax free. Tax free. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, but the hiring of the services that you yeah. had, we had a free pit, I think, of what we've had so for years. We've been paying. Hey, so everything you say, I got I mean, support. You know, what's a total? Or even a projected total. Yeah, That's I'm First meeting. Okay, let it go, Mike. Let her out. So he, he just did. So those are a lot of valid points, and those are all things. Those that are costs aside from the loan. Yeah, yeah, totally. And those are all things that uh, we're focused on. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but we can get them. I should have them tonight. I'm sorry that I don't. Um, do you have them? I know the answer. Excellent. I Tell us the answer. answer. Tell everyone the answer. Go ahead. Period. The cost of operating that pit is absolutely no different than the cost of running this one over here. It's going to be operated exactly the same manner, the same. Oh, we don't know that number. Well, well we. That number. I'm talking manpower. Yeah, yeah, but what manpower? So I'm asking you. I'm asking you what man additional what additional manpower are you talking about? Exactly. Well, we've got the we've got people in the we do often have one person. I you with one of you easier to do. Oh, sorry. Just saying, if I gotta hire you one at a time, you go fast. All right, sounds good. What I'm saying is, there's no additional manpower needed for this project. Yep. Now, but what if your own crew is two people short in five years? It isn't going to be two people short. Sure. Don't say that. Well, it's, 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 we're not going to let, you know, Todd Burling is the last guy who's going to ever drive down the town of the highway. Picking a name. We're going to replace them. I'm just watching so, what's going around in the yeah, world. Yeah, but we're not going to. We have to have, we have to have road crew. So we will have road crew. We can't, this, we're not going to be too, yeah. too less. We're, we would also have problems in the winter. winter. We're likely to add staff, not lose staff, but not for that particular project. So, so no additional staff, no additional cost. It's going to cost the same amount to get material crushed out there as it costs to get material crushed up there. It's going to cost the same amount to get sand screened there as it costs us to get sand screened anywhere else. The equipment wise, we already own the loader. When you hire a contractor or a vendor to come in and do the crushing or the screening, that's part of that process. They, they do that. So we just need our loader to be up there to, to load. Um, so there's no real additional cost other than the payment. And the price to the price when you say we should be buying it from somewhere else, when we're buying material from somewhere else, we're paying that person for that land and that material. So that cost, all we we're paying up here, what we're our, our forty thousand dollars a year for the first, you know, average for the first ten years probably or whatever. That is much less than if we were paying for at 10, 12, 15 dollars a yard. Plus, we're driving to Morrisville or to Danville or to someplace farther away. This is absolutely the closest, closest pit that the town of Hardwick is ever going to have the opportunity to have. And when it's gone, we will have to buy it from Morrisville or St. Johnsbury or wherever. Um, but for right now, We've already had a couple of towns contact us and want to buy sand from us because we, we were not the only people that wanted this thing. And Kenny was very generous to the town in his offer to us, too. So um, this is just, you know, I'm just being honest with everyone. This is a good thing for the town of Harvard. It's not a bad thing at all. So I'd just like to respond briefly to my, yeah. one of Mike's questions, which is, you're absolutely right that the total cost of the gravel has got to include, or whatever you're taking out, the gravel, the sand, the crushed uh, ledge, it's got to include all your costs, right? Like if you have somebody working there, you got to roll that in. If you're paying payments on the land, you got to roll that in. The cost of the fuel, all that stuff, you're hiring somebody to crush. So I apologize for not having the figures in front of me, but I, and I'm just going to speak off the top of my head, but we did do this analysis a couple years ago for our current pit, 
because we had quite a discussion about what's it actually cost us to get like the gravel out of our current pit is not free like there was there were you know some people were saying well you know we get our own gravel we have it in our pit and we said well that, it's just not free like you, it costs something to get it out so we did the analysis on that and at that i believe my recollection is that our cost on that gravel was roughly 60 percent of what we could buy it for somewhere else so right, and I'm not saying it's free. I'm just saying it's not going to be any more. Than this pit is, is going to cost us no more than what that pit costs. But so Mike's point to is, run. but Mike's point is yeah. more like, should we be running a pit? Right. And I think. Should we run a pit? Right. right. And I don't think it's going to come with it. It's going to be a want for a piece of equipment because it's going to be too difficult to truck one. All of a sudden, they're going to say, we need a loader for the pit. We don't have well, one, we're, and they we're want to own one, even if it's. We could handle on the management of the equipment to the point where we just got rid of a loader, knowing that we were going to have this fit, and we still made that decision. So, you know, you got to have some faith in the management. That's, you know. What, no, but he's bringing up good points. Right? Do right. but money, money costs money to borrow. Okay, it's. Yeah. It's just that five hundred thousand dollars doesn't gr it grows. Okay, and it comes with, like I say, the additional labor of stuff. Um, and there's pits around us that are going to be there. That's all part of what I'm saying is with that 500,000 plus interest better somewhere else. If you've done all the cost analysis, I hope it then I hope it's right on. I understand the balancing act, but like I say I also look at when we have enough road crew or people that can work down the road. Right. You never know. You never know, you but never I do know. think that we um, I think our biggest staffing crunch is in the winter for plowing. And so if we, I mean, we'll have a strong incentive to continue to maintain a road crew to the level that we are able to keep the roads clear all winter. And then in the summer, it has been, it has worked at the current staffing levels to also do the pick when we hire out the crushing. And I think mostly what they end up doing is trucking. I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. If I'm questioning the feasibility of five hundred thousand dollars at an interest rate and anything else that goes wrong, right. as opposed to just planning on how long does it take to spend five hundred thousand dollars plus interest? Is it the same? Okay, I understand Danny, the cost per yard. Yeah. How many yards? I do not ask. Yeah, I I, I'm not breaking down the road crew for how many yards, but is it cost effective? It's so all our I I realize you people have been talking about it for quite a while and and yeah. just curious. I am sorry that I don't have the really consultant. Right? I know I don't have the consultant report. Because we did we did we went through this. You're gonna try to pull it up. Cool. So Tom did a lot of work on this too, Yeah. Yeah, but we did have um, we did ask all these questions and yes, oh rise. I just was wondering if in a year or two the Billings pit is basically dead hmm. as a pit for us, what becomes of that property? So that property currently is um, it's one of those properties, like so many, that was originally deeded to the village of Hardwick, which then becomes the town of Hardwick and right. the village and the town merge. You've and had it that long? Yeah. That was a long time ago. And the, um, 35 years. And, the, and it's one of the properties that the electric department treats as an asset. So... How does the electric department use a gravel pit? Right now, they have solar panels in it. Well, the gravel pit's gone, yeah. That's over. On the front of the gravel. Well, the, the part that had already been um, right. used there's up. No more, there's no more gravel to be had, though, is what I'm saying. It's, so, so it could just be... The um, reason they don't play it is because of hardwood clay. Yep. Okay, I still didn't understand why the hardware department, electric department, has that land. Yeah, they yeah. own it for. You, you answered, but you answered, but I couldn't hear you. Oh, sorry. Why they have it? Yeah. What because is up there? What's going to be up there after you close the pit? Uh, the same thing that's up there now. Which is that's what I mean. I didn't. Woods. Hear you uh, there's woods. There are trails. There's it's. Um, Someone told me there were solar panels up there. Yeah, and there's solar panels. Okay, that's. You said something and I yep. didn't hear Oh, sorry. Yeah, solar panels. So Hardwick Electric did 
contract to have a large solar panel installation up there it currently is providing I, quite a bit of power. I don't think quite as much as the Dan Mavolka, but quite a bit. Okay, another question on solar panels, and I know that's away from your gravel pit in Crossbury, but what becomes of the solar panels when their time is up? Because I, I understand they are non-recyclable. I don't know the answer to that. That's all the question. Yeah, that's a question for the for the um, electric board. I believe the way they structured that is they hired somebody to do the whole installation. I believe that company owns the solar panels and everything, and they have, the Heart of Electric has a power purchase agreement for the power. I think, but is that the same agreement that's for the one in? East Hardwood? No. Because there's a solar panel. That's different. That's different. Yeah. Maybe I could just speak to what Mike was asking sure. about. Sure. I think it makes sense probably, Mike, to have, which we should have had tonight. I can't find it on my phone. Maybe Casey has it, having the, the report at town meeting for, for the gravel pit. Yeah. Maybe a little more clear your question what about report? those numbers. The consultant's the report. The consultant's report. He did he spell out numbers? We yeah, talked, we talked about it. I think we have it. I think so. We have Tom. You don't think so? Of what it, the cost of production? Yeah, estimate. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. So we think. It was like eight dollars a yard. I mean, I know right. that number. So we think we have the numbers. Yeah. We'll get them to you. We'll get them posted on the website, and we'll have them at town meeting. How's that? I know. Well, the best you could ask is we were prepared and had it tonight. Well, it's T minus on town meeting with a vote. I know. You know, yeah. but you, and you're in the proper form of having an informational hearing, and yeah. and I just yeah, maybe nobody else cares. Okay. People should. <laughs> this is exactly the questions that we asked, and this is why we have to ask this. Our pit's running out. Should we have another pit? Correct. Yeah, that's correct. Several questions. Uh, first, I think you're right on the solar panels. I think there is an agreement where Barbara Collector buys the power but has nothing to do with the actual physical construction. I think I remember what, what you said about that. Anyway, regarding the property deeded to the village, then the town took it over, does that mean it's the town's? In perpetuity? Well, it, not necessarily, but it's owned by the town and its and its electric department. Yeah. Okay. How much land is there? Um, I'm gonna say there's 200 to 300 acres in that parcel. Uh, I'd have to look it up. You can look it up online on the tax map viewer. Yeah, it's not that big a deal. That's where I was thinking too. Was somewhere in that neighborhood. It's a lot of land. Do we yeah. need it? Anyway, that's, don't even talk about that now. One other question I have is, uh, you mentioned the new Act 250 permit. I don't know that much about Act 250. Is that transferable? Yeah, so the way Act 250 permits generally work is they generally run with the land. So, so it's not only is it transferable, but it's like, it, it transfers by default. Yeah, that's what I thought, but I wasn't sure. Yep. Um, and uh, so I think, and again, I'm going out on limb a little bit, I think that the earth extraction permits, like the gravel pit permit, are the only ones that do expire. I think all the other Act 250 permits just run in perpetuity. Yeah. One other question. The $500,000 bond, what does that cover, encompass? That's the purchase just, price. That's just the the pit. The price. land. So the land is approximately uh, 175. yeah, 175 acres, um, of which the pit is a, a portion. Right, but I don't know if we covered anything like any of the equipment, like what Mike, Mike mentioned, or anything else. Uh, At this point, no. No. Pit and the materials are yeah, the pit and the material is left on site. Right, that's, there's a bunch of existing inventory that's ready to use. Right. Sand, screen gravels, such. I'm hearing.
hearing a recurring theme about what about the equipment that's going to be used up there. Which is a valid point. Um, I think that um, that we have, like Danny said, you drive a loader up there and you use it up there and when you're trucking your, your stuff out of there, but um, we, what we have been doing and what we would continue to do is hire somebody to do the crushing and if we get to that ledge, the, the blasting and crushing the ledge too. Ken Davis, can you hear us? And if so, do you want to add anything to this conversation? No, we could hear them, but they couldn't hear us. I've heard her say. Oh, no, really? You know how it is, yeah. Oh. They don't know why, though. I don't think these mics. Five dollars on red. <laughs> I don't think the mics. The mics pick up a lot, but they don't really pick up like our individual voices, and especially for Mike over there. He's too far away from me, Mike, so they couldn't hear him when he was talking. That's true. It is hard to hear when you're on Zoom. So, so some of your voices, it's hard to hear you from to hear. <laughs> you're speaking softly. Okay. We'll Actually, try to be loud. You speak pretty loud. So, any more questions? or comments. I think we have a little homework. We're going to we're going to pull together some of the details on uh, more specific details on costs and disseminate that information prior to down here. Casey, that report is on the website as an addendum to the I minutes. you know I'm not sure. I actually looked for it because I looked for the meeting that Gary Nolan was at, which was October 6, I believe. And I can't find it. And um, oh, we had a folder that was gravel pit, and that's where I got like some of this information. But I, I couldn't find a formal presentation. And it, it could well, have been number was only paper. what it cost to manufacture yeah. the material. It wasn't. It well, we had previous numbers estimating um, our, our labor costs for correct for manufacturing right. gravel in our own pit. Right. So we should be able to pull something together. Although Tuesday is right around the corner. Oh, right. That's a moderator hat on now. When do you anticipate taking the floor and discussing that it is it is not part of the meeting? <coughs> and uh, there's nothing in the town report about it, so it's not going to come up under that issue. The only place that I foresee it coming up is at the end of the meeting the with audience. other business. Yeah. Well, the yeah. discussion is tonight, so there really is no discussion. Well, you were so just we saying you were going to decimate, disseminate, right. disseminate the information. Right. So we, can, we can, yeah, I'll, I can do that in the other business at the end. So, yeah. I, I think we can also, or add to this existing document. I can't hear you. We could also add some new numbers to the existing document that we warned for this meeting. Okay, the only um, warning that I've seen is just that you're going to vote on it at town meeting. And there's no other figures there other than the $500,000 price. She's talking about in the public hearing, um, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Potchin right here, oh, okay. here tonight. Do you have a copy of the results? Yeah, sorry. Sherry's reminding me we also were going to talk about the budget uh, before 6 o'clock. So I'm going to pivot us to item 2, summarize the budget and uh, any significant projects. There are a lot of projects. Um, basically, bear with me, we're at, we have put together a budget that proposes a total budget increase of $171,219, which is about 4.8%. The increase in revenues isn't coming up that fast. It's only up 3.78%. So that nets out to needing to raise property taxes about 5.13%. And just at a very high level, 
the main drivers for cost, this well, the, probably the biggest thing that we've been hit by is the fuel costs. Heating fuels, diesel fuels, gasoline, all our fuel costs are up this year, and so we've tried to we've tried to forecast that into our budget for next year. Salt has gone up a lot, and looks like it probably will stay that way. Our health insurance premiums are going to be up 20 percent. Employee salaries, um, we needed to we felt we needed to increase salaries to get them toward a market market wage to retrain, retain employees. Also, we were in contract negotiations for two unions this year. Um, <coughs> so, uh, yeah, so we have a lot of increases pushing, pushing up the cost of everything, basically, which is why we're looking at and trying to asking the voters to approve a, an increased budget. Typically, we try, we, we like to, in past years, when inflation rates have been lower, we've tried to keep our, our annual increase under 3%. This year, that didn't seem possible to maintain services um, with the cost of everything going up. Some of it is, some of it is a little bit of guesswork because we actually don't know fuel prices, what they're going to be next winter. But, so we tried to take a middle road. They aren't quite as high as, we, we forecast fuel prices that weren't quite as high as we were paying when we were building this budget, but not as low as they were before, you know, things really ran up. All right. In looking at your budgets and the school budgets, because we just had two school meetings this week. The school has Hardwick's common level of appraisal at 78.42. Mm. In your book, it's 88.45. That's 10% higher. Which one is correct? Wait, where, is, yes. where are you seeing that in our report? No, no, she's talking about the school. The budget. school reports, the school reports. Both Hazen and the elementary district have Hardwick's level common level of appraisal at 78.42. And I was looking through here on where you were talking, and I don't really remember what page yeah. it was on. Oh, is it the assessor report, maybe? Maybe. OK, so that probably was before. So he would be giving numbers that were as of June 30th, 22. And now we've gotten a notice from the state that our CLA has dropped below is it the 85 percent we have yeah it says appraisal. the schools have got 78.4 correct so what so is would, that the correct number um i don't have it in front of me it's well i just took it out of the reports they gave last night yeah that, that sounds right so the 88 is would have been oh. prior way to over inflated it's just an old number it's just an old date because it would have been as of 6 30 last year Okay. 6.30.22. And I really think if you're going to do that sort of a report in your paperwork that comes out in January, February, that those numbers should be updated because it leads hardwood citizens that don't read the school report to think everything's hunky-dory with our level of appraisal when in essence the state should be on your Backsides telling you that we need a reappraisal. And we and already got our letter. We already, already got our letter. letter. We've already contracted. Well, we didn't sign the contract, but we've already set up. Um, and we did an RFP for reappraisal and have selected a vendor. We just have to sign a contract. There will be a because with no gazette, a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. So somehow you should have bought the gazette. Mm. I'm tired, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Best job I ever had. <laughs> But no, it's not getting out there, is my point. Agreed. And we discussed this at the Hazen meeting last night, that with virtually no gazette, it's online for those few that have the ability to get online. And in this town, that's hit or miss. Well, we yeah. have a paper record. It's just not the gazette anymore. That's true. We are putting uh, town notices now go in the News and Citizen. Again, yeah. it wouldn't, or is it how do we know that? Or yeah, you could read it. We know, but how do we know that, that that's now our local paper? Where was that put we, out so that I would know? I didn't know that. Years ago, 
when the Gazette went digital, that's when we had to switch. It was voted on at a select board meeting, so. Because uh, on advice of our lawyer, the, the interpretation of Vermont statute was the paper of record had to be a published circulated paper, it couldn't be online. That right. may change. Right, but again, with no paper to read that in, I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's always hard to reach it. It's, yeah, it's hard. It is hard to push information out. And, and I really appreciate you guys for coming meetings. tonight. Hmm? There was much discussion at both school meetings because they didn't mail their reports. A lot of towns are choosing not to. We are very, I was very happy to receive the report. Well, you were lucky. Yes. <laughs> I told you it was a lot of So, Boris, just to really recap, just to really recap what you're asking, because I think we're, which is great, we're getting a lot of input about how we're communicating. I think it's important that we just, that, so what you're asking is that we specifically communicate that we're going to need to do a reappraisal in the next few years, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, but no, I, I just want to, I just want to yes. clarify that that's what you're asking, that we make it more clear that that's going to be down the road. It should be years. soon. Yep. Well. As it turns out, almost every town in Vermont has to do a reappraisal, and so it's very hard to get a date for a reappraisal. So ours is two years out. They'll start work in the fall of 2024, and it won't be complete until probably the end of 2025. That was the soonest slot we could get. So the harder taxpayers are taxed more than the other districts, in the other towns in our school district. That is not the way it's supposed to work. It's supposed to be adjusted by the common level of appraisal. So that's supposed to equalize. But that's not how they explain it. Thanks, Mike. So there's something missing in communication between the town's perceptive of common level and the school's perceptive of common level. And who actually sets the tax rate for the school? Is that the treasurer, the town treasurer for each town? They're told how much money has to come from each town. We get something from the, the state, state of Vermont that tells us what we have to set it okay. back. Yeah. The state decides all those numbers. They do, yes. Okay. They I've been out of it for a while. They give us the common level of They give us the common level of raising number as well, right? That's something. That I don't know the answer to. Is that what they call that number? That is yeah, the it is, yeah. Yes. Okay. So we just received that. I mean, the appraisal is the appraisal, the common level. So it's this generated number from Correct. the Right, and it's supposed to, common level of appraisal is supposed to tell you how far off you are from, right. uh, from being... Where you need to be. Right. From sale price to tax price. Right. It's supposed to okay. tell you that. Right now we're probably at 50% of the way I see market going. Yeah, yeah I mean, you're always, it's something you're always chasing. Yeah. Yeah. But I think we could, we could definitely, and it is our... Like we could communicate not only that the reprisal is going to be happening in the next couple of years, but what that might look like because it's going to be, it's been 10 years, well, not quite 10 years, but 2016. 2016. So it will be almost 10 years by the time it's done. Yeah, okay. I just happened to notice that in this and remember the numbers from the last two nights. One, one sort of budget question yeah. that we need to grab with it. Yeah. Why two thirds drop and what are saying? Because of the existing inventory that's already there. So um, we try. What was the question? It's so a great what, question. He asked, "What? Why are we? Why does our budget forecast a drop in the, the what we pay for our winter sand?" And the answer is that if the bond bill passes and we buy the gravel pit, there's already gravel or sorry sand stockpiled there. That, so currently, we buy sand from this pit. And we wouldn't be buying it, we'd be buying the pit. The size of that just got my attention. I was yeah. curious why the difference. Yeah. Yeah, there, uh, yeah, so I outlined the high level of, of things that changed and had a big difference. We also moved, there are a few other things in here that might strike people as a large difference. There are a few things that the auditors, I think, recommended that we move um, debt payments, like uh, um, uh, 
the bond payments out of we had been putting money into our capital fund and then paying some of the some for equipment some bond payments out of our capital fund they recommended moving that don't put it in the capital fund first and then pay it just leave it in your your annual budget so you'll see in a couple places it looks like we've yeah. decreased our capital budget but really what we did was move a bond payment into the operating budget that was a question I had yeah that. yeah and especially look at the highway budget and notice so those three more <coughs> bond payments so we sh you know we're still funding our equipment through all of our, our capital stuff the way that we've always funded it and not what we purchase versus lease payments. Except so except for well that's why we were putting the amount into the capital budget and sucking it out because it always Yes, because every other piece of equipment. Happen, right. So now that we've got we're gonna have these this equipment that isn't in there there's no replacement fund for it. There's no capital fund for that equipment any longer. Unless we add it back Unless in. Unless we continue to put it in the capital fund. The capital fund eventually is going to shrink that amount. Because it's yeah. that, that's not in there. So even though this year we funded it like we normally do, and we took some payments out, that's what we need to do if we plan on going back to purchase. Right. So purchases, which you know, maybe today's age, I mean, I think we need to really try to... But that's with for her. next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah for next year, look at, look at putting the... So, just so people know what Danny's talking about, I think it's the loader and the grader. Yes. Are on leases and, the, and, and the has been. All three. And the excavator. Well, it's going to be, but it is. If you go ahead and Yeah. So, but all our other equipment, our trucks and everything else is bought outright. We save money in the capital fund and then we buy it. Except for these two or three pieces Which of we've equipment. Which we for a few years, too. So what Danny's saying, I think, is that we, the select board, should think about next year contributing also to the capital fund and starting to fund it so that the next time, instead of leasing, we would buy those outright. So we're we're not going, yeah, well, if not, if that capital fund is going to be, you know, the, the ability to purchase things eventually is going to be depleted. Altogether. Or lease. Because it's going to be all lease. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, but if we want to pivot, if we want to change that yes. pattern, we're going to break that so that instead of leasing, we're purchasing. We just don't want to lose track of the fact that when we're leasing equipment, we're doing nothing to for the future. Mm -hmm. Except for paying for a piece of equipment by the time the lease is up, it's going to be worn out. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a down payment to trade in. I don't know, is there, are they purchased a lease so we'll have trade-ins? That one will be a, like a purchase lease. So we'll have trade-ins at the end of it. Uh, well, no, we'll pretty much own them at the end of the lease. We'll own them, so we'll be able to trade them in. Yes. I mean, at some point, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, I guess we build some equity that way, but it's still not the way we were doing it. Yeah. All right. This isn't a budget, but it's a town meeting question. Yeah. Um, you said that you were going to do it in the fall. I never saw it officially, but I've heard through rumor that the charter changes we voted on a year ago were approved by legislature and the governor signed them. Yes. So we will not be electing auditors and listers at town meeting. Right. Right. And I went through the people that need to be, the positions that need to be filled at town meeting, and currently the majority of them are vacant. So it's going to be hard to just reelect the same person. Do you have names of anybody that has come forward, or have you tried to look for names for any of those positions? Because those are positions that you, as a select board, could have filled. And again, not seeing a paper, I don't know if you've advertised that they were available, or if you even need the officials, and should they have been deleted when we did the charter change? I don't like when guys come in and holler at us. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's either now or before town meeting. Yeah. I'd rather do it now. Better now. That's fine. I, I don't know the answer to that question, that's for sure. And there's well, also five library trustees. Whom would I speak to to get names? Jody Lou Smith. 
I thought she retired. No. No, she retired. I'll be knocking on her door, dragging her down off the hill. <laughs> she didn't think also, about what she's got to do. She, she can tell me that so I can look her up. Yes, and she <laughs> has a plan because the existing people want to continue. Okay. So she's mm -hmm. got all the information. Okay. And Tanya, haven't you put several notices on front porch forum of the vacancies that Casey yes I have I've seen the last them. year yeah. and they were on you know yeah. rated places they were on the ballots no right. names but the right yeah I lost so front porch forum for a while but it's it's reappeared I don't know what happened <laughs> I think it was a couple months last yeah. or last summer well, we just after town meeting to 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 the town to report I that put out all the same okay. for all the vacancies Wait. we're right a little behind I did yeah, just start first choir um we even have something in the town report on the page after this town officials kind of saying, what do these people do? I saw that. So, so um, yeah. yeah, we're really trying. But so I can refer to those as yeah. some I okay. think, yeah, we don't. If, if no one uh, is nominated and elected from the floor, then the select board, I guess, can fill them after yes. town meeting yes. if we need them. You should fill them anyway if you have them in the books. Whether they do anything or not is yeah. another thing. Yeah. But if they're required by charter, which yeah. they must be, um, yeah. they should be filled. Yeah, the challenge is finding people. That's what I feel. I realize that. Yeah. I realize that. <laughs> yeah. And that's another population that's aging out. Let's not talk about aging. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Go I'm gonna school. I'm gonna wrap up the. Um, the informational meeting portion of tonight's program um, and adjourn that. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, and please stay for the next event, which is the uh, regular select board meeting. Um, so first item is to call to order, which I'm doing. And we're going to set adjust agenda. Do we have to add, subtract, change anything? No. Everybody good? We'll roll with the agenda as written. Um, next, communication from the audience. You guys have been communicative. Feel yeah. free to. Let's hear about our eyes. Can you pause for just a moment so that I can. I can oh, we have to start a new. We have to start a new Zoom because it's a different one. So, Kenny, so Kenny did text me. He was having interconnected problems. Yeah. Okay. But I told him I didn't I'll say, now if there's an issue, I don't think there's anything that you can. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so we will put those numbers together. Yeah, that's my question. Uh, I'll, well, theoretically, we have Well, we have it's pretty easy because all the only numbers we really have are uh, <laughs> how much do we use a year and what it costs to yard to manufacture. Tell me. Yeah. Yeah. We get, we'll share what we have. Yeah. But that's that's yeah, that's what he's asking. Operating costs. Mm -hmm. But if it's on the ballot, Jeffrey. But if it's on the ballot, can it be shared? I don't think we're supposed to talk about it, right. are we? I don't think so. And you can't have information. Well, right. wow. for I know for election stuff you can't. So <laughs> I was going to look like into We're not supposed to be talking yes, about. Yes, you may. You right. You may talk about money items, but you may not talk candidates. Okay. Personnel that are on, so you can't talk about the select board, whoever's running, and the um, right. board members. But anything else is fair game. So, uh, money item, but information on money items are good. Yes. All right, so we'll say that that was communication from the audience in the uh, select board meeting that's already in progress. Um, <laughs> Next is select board to approve the minutes from the regular meeting last time, which is February 16. The motion to approve the minutes as written. Is there? Second. Uh, I thought they looked good. All in favor of approving minutes as, or any Aye. discussion? Or all in favor? Aye. 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 He was well. Any opposed? Motion passes, thank you. Um, Next is a uh, road foreman report, and I think the report there is he's probably in a plow truck. <laughs> well, they're, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're busy plowing. They're busy. And, and um, as I did ask, I was like, all the equipment's working okay? And yeah, that's, now, that's usually my question. Now, Do we have any trucks broken? Yep, yeah, not right now. We're okay. Can you, can you 
Casey, do you happen to know whether that banner went in the river or whether they grabbed it? I'm pretty sure they grabbed it. Okay. Because yeah. it is gone. Yes, I know it was the next morning. But I asked them to go get it, and then, yeah, so I okay. so feel pretty confident have it. that we have yeah. it. If you're missing well, the banner. On, on, yeah. on the road crew's behalf, yes. I would ask people that shovel near the sidewalks not to shovel their snow into the sidewalks. We won't. Into, into the, the sidewalk or into yeah, the street? Yeah, into the sidewalk yeah. instead. So then the sidewalk's blocked right after you just plowed it. But the snow between the sidewalk and the road, they shovel back up into the sidewalk. <laughs> I so you usually put it out into the street with the hope that in the night they'll clean it. Well, we, right. you know, uh, Edward does a really pretty good job, I think, of, and he does a lot of hand shoveling. Yeah, he does. Around the town of Hardwick, but I can wit, tell you right now, I've never seen a Barry City employee with a shovel in their hand. Yeah, um, it's exciting to see so him out there clearing the crosswalks. Yeah, he does, people can get he does through. an outstanding yeah. job, and when they get all done, you know, I had to call him call them in and have them send them back down South Main Street to clean up the mess that a resident made. It was kind of yeah. disturbing. It's like, come on. People. So, public service notice. Public don't, service notice. Don't shovel your snow onto the sidewalk. I understand it. It's no fun shoveling snow, but it's... Okay. Put it yeah. in the street. Next, police department report given by Chief Mike Henry. Um, <clears throat> well, the big thing is stole bills. We got a lot of complaints, uh, speeding on the rail trail, that type of thing, so we refocused things and uh, had the guys out there uh, trying to do speed control and they didn't come across anybody speeding. Um, so <laughs> Funny how that works. Funny how that works. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes, is it a case of your presence slows people down? It could be that. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. Well, that, that's what we got to do. That's fine. But my, so I'm out there a lot and, and part of the situation I believe is the fact that even 25 miles an hour on a snowmobile when you're standing four feet away from it, to, to a lot of people, especially ones not used to it, it really seems like people are speeding, where in fact they're actually going 10 miles an hour under the posted speed limit, right. or, the, or the legal speed limit for that rail trail. So, you know, I know this, the club, we're working hard, we're putting a couple more signs up, I know the police department's working hard. Another public service message, I would ask that the, some of these people that are having issues with it try to be tolerable of it um, to a point where we, we can get it figured out. I mean, it's not perfect right now, but I really, I haven't seen a lot of people speeding through it here, certainly not going above the, you know, the legal speed limit, which we don't really control. Right. So it... To what you're saying there, uh, the majority of the people who we're running into, I mean the large majority, I'd say it's you know, over 95%, are all legal on the snowmobiles. You know, they've got all their stuff. It's just that uh, small percentage that uh, we're running into that, uh, you know, you're going to have that no matter what you do. Yeah. But uh, they're doing good. And then just another, I guess, public service an announcement is, you know, the rail trail is closed from 11 p.m. till 6 a.m. Same thing with the town roads. That are open, they're closed at that time too for first good news. <coughs> right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. Do you want me to say everything else too? <laughs> well, <laughs> they're not. They're not closed for walking. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Grooming. So, right. Grooming. 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 It's still that can be at night yeah. too. But uh, just for the snowmobilers that are out there, just so people remember, uh, they're closed then. Um, one thing I kind of talked about. Uh, I don't know if I brought it up in the meeting last time, but uh, uh, we're doing dealing a lot with uh, some administrative stuff with expungements um, from the courts. Typically, in a typical year, we would deal with four or five expungements a year. Just in the last two weeks, we've had 64 expungements oh, that have come in. 64 what? Expungements of criminal records. Uh, so we have to go through, clean out all the cases associated with those. And it's just this year has just exponentially uh, increased with expungements. I don't know the reason why, but uh, it's just taking a lot of time, administrative time on our part. Is there any way you can add just some admitted? I mean, does it have to be, has to be somebody that knows your system and I mean, you can't just hire an administrative temp person or something to get caught up? It's no, no, it's got to be somebody. Because you be, said it takes some time to It do takes that. some time. It depends on the case. Uh, some cases you have to go through and redact information and, you know, 
It just takes a lot of time. By some time, you mean 15 minutes, an hour and a half, It depends all day. on the case. Mm -hmm. it, um, you know, some cases, uh, Scott can get done, you know, within a half an hour hunt, a case maybe, and some cases take a couple hours. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, That's just to go through. Cases in two weeks. In two weeks, mm -hmm. yeah. Additional so, workload. Right, right. Yeah. So, just more administrative stuff, and I'm not sure why the courts are doing this now, but they are going through expunging everything. So that's not doing anything, and I'm asking this question, that's not doing anything to help the backlog of the court cases. No. Not a, not a thing. It's just adding hmm. additional work to you guys for no well, reason. It's adding work to the court, too, and my understanding of there may be retired judges who are doing all the expungements right now. Hmm. So I'm not sure. And are these marijuana? Driven charges? Mostly? Some are, yeah. It just all kinds of different stuff. Well, random. Low, low level. Yeah. Some of us stuff. But still, it's on the record, then it wasn't that low. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on the record. I didn't get any free expungements for my record. <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if you have an answer to this, but do you see that hopefully dropping? Do you think that's going to just keep being the case? I'm just thinking about like the sustainability of all that work for. I don't know. Like, uh, sure. This yeah. just started this year um, with Hopefully the uh, with things just increasing with the expungements and it's, it's just amazing, you know, when you get 10, 12 in a day, yeah. um, Jesus. it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. mind-blowing. <coughs> All the problems that we have in our court system, why would they be taking on this additional work? Right? Well, it would be nice if they could work on the backlog that's right. instead. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, you log over there three times a week. Right. Right. Yeah. right, Nick. Won't go there. <laughs> so I just wanted to uh, uh, talk about one of the officers that I've got uh, that we have working for us is Paul Bernard. Um, he started in uh, April of 2022. Um, he has been uh, a huge asset to the department, not only as a law enforcement officer, but he brings with him uh, the uh, he's very tech savvy. So on the IT side, he's saved us a lot of money having to bring somebody in. We've redone all, all our computer systems. He's worked on uh, uh, a lot of our software and social media stuff. He's also helped us uh, you know, with our body camera storage. Uh, that's, that's huge, uh, just trying to get all that stuff organized and keeping, it, keeping us into the 21st century. We're working now on uh, trying to eliminate a lot of our paperwork and everything that's sent to the, uh, you know, state's attorney's office is now going to be sent electronically. Where before we were physically taking copies, now we have an encrypted system that will do that for us. So I just wanted to uh, give kudos to Paul Bernard. Um, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, that is. Yeah. That's all I have. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Well, good job. Are they on your patrol still? Because I've gone down every time I'm out in the middle of the night. Because I'm grooming, so I'm out in the middle of the night. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm glad you clarified <laughs> 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 um, And seeing them guys out there, you know, 11 o'clock at night, bedtime, 1 o'clock in the morning, you drive through sleep, you're all hard, right? You see that cruiser sitting there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Makes a huge difference to me. I can tell you that as a citizen. I'm like, that's, there's no <laughs> See you guys on Tuesday. All right, thanks, all right. All right. So, yeah. No, I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's a good, that's a good thing just for everyone to be able to see those guys out there doing their jobs and really do. It makes me feel good about it. Okay. Thanks. As long as they don't stop me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just say this every time. Or give you a parking ticket. Yeah, I'm parking on the crosswalk in the morning. All right, so item one is select board to consider appointing Jeff Fairs. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, to the Hardwick Conservation Commission. And we had a letter. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll say, um, for the record, Jeff is my husband and he's watching Milo, so he should be calling uh, him. How, do, how do we say his last name? It's Ferris. You got oh, Ferris? <laughs> Ferris, yep. Oh, so and I he's know going, him. He's going to zoom in. But I didn't he, know his last name. Yep. Oh. Well, we definitely got to see this guy. He's a <laughs> Well, I'd say from the... Right. So I'll be abstaining, too. You'll be so abstaining, we, but... So we come back to that? Or yeah, we'll come back. Now. Let's just do it now. Let's do... Yeah, well, we'll make a motion he's a certified arborist. Yeah. He has an interest, and... Let's make a motion that we do it, and then we can meet it. 
Make, you're making a motion that yeah, we're yeah, point. I don't do that very well. I'm doing that on your Second. Uh, don't look at me. <laughs> second. We, we have a second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Those abstaining? Abstaining. Okay. Thank you. Motion passes. Excellent. And Welcome. thank you to Jeff. Uh, next, select board to consider approval of several liquor and tobacco licenses. There's several. Fourteen. Yeah. It's fourteen? There's fourteen. Why so many? Why, how well, come I only read two? Because of the tobacco. Oh. Right. So some have three, like their liquor license, or tobacco oh. license, or tobacco oh. license. Did we do them all at once, or did, how does it work? So let's, I just want to, I'm just going to read them. I'm going to read them and then we do them all. So we've got first class um, license for the American Legion Post 7, second class licenses for Global Montello Group doing business as Jiffy Mart, for Hardwick Convenience and Deli LLC, for GSB LLC doing business as D&L Beverage and Deli. Okay, that's the second classes. The third class licenses for American Legion Post 7. An outside consumption permit for American Legion Post 7. Tobacco licenses for, again, Jiffy Mart, Tops, Dollar General, and Hardwick Convenience and Deli. Uh, and GSP. And GSP doing business as DNL. Um, tobacco. Are there problems? Uh, no, this is one hang on, let me read through. Okay. The tobacco substitute endorsement for Jiffy Mart, Hardwood Convenience, and Deli, and DNL. Um, and we did have, we do have a note. I see the note. To now. the tobacco that um, Hardwood Convenience and Deli had a first offense selling tobacco to a 19 year old minor, and they got a warning no further offenses. Um, I'll make a motion that we approve all of these licenses. Second. Uh, any discussion? My, o my only question, Tanya, mm -hmm. is if any of these um, are new. Like, <coughs> nope, they're all renewals. They're all renewals, yeah. great. Yeah. I mean, even with that first offense violation, yeah. I mean, it was. Yeah. We're selling to a 15 year old. We've got 19 yeah. year old buying Swisher Sweets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Living on the edge. All right. So, so we have a motion to pass uh, to approve all the licenses and second. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. There's probably signatures coming around. You don't have to sign. I do it all so right now. Oh, that's what the, I was trying to read the note at the bottom, but I wasn't <laughs> reading it fast enough. Awesome. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, next is uh, item three, select board to complete the annual certification of compliance for the town road and bridge standards. We do this every year as annual might imply. Make a motion that we sign uh, the certification of compliance for town roads and bridge standards and network inventory. Second. Oh. Uh, she got it. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion on certifying that we're going to, we actually have this many of we're going to approve the standards and we're up to date with our network inventory. Um, for All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next, um, uh, item four is select board to consider approving a banner application for the AWARE banner to be hung on Wolka Street September 30th, 2023 through October 7th. I'd like to motion to approve the AWARE banner be hung on Wolcott Street September 20th to October 7th. Second. Don't okay. suppose it'll get in the way when they bring the bridge. <laughs> well. The bridge is long and short, not tall. Here's, here's hoping. Let's hope, let's hope that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, just, I just felt like I was that up. All right. I, yeah, we can yeah. We have the. We'll manage it. We will. Yeah. We'll move it to the bridge then. Yeah. yeah. All right. All, all in favor of approving the AWARE banner in the fall, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Next, item five, select board to certify the Agency of Transportation annual mileage certificate. Again, we do this every year. It Motion is. to approve the annual mileage certificate. Second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, include the yawn in the minutes. Wow. <laughs> Any discussion? Uh, it's a total of 81.471 miles. 
approved. Uh, all in favor of approving the mileage certificate, please say aye. 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 Any yeah. opposed? More snowmobile trail. Motion carries. Really? Thank you. So that's the mileage certificate. Uh, item six, select board to discuss working together with Hardwick Electric to implement EV charging stations in or near downtown. So this is me. We can't even work together to get a meeting. I, so that's true. <laughs> March 13th. March 13th. March 13th. March 13th. March 13th. Probably okay. Friday. March, no, it's a Monday. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I got it. So, so what do you want to do? So here's the thing. Let me just let me just try to summarize. So we a while ago we had um, someone come and talk to us about the lack of charging facilities in downtown Harbor. And it was a very discussion, but in the end, uh, one of the, I I did reach out to it turns out a friend of mine is on the Stowe Electric Board of Commissioners. So I reached out and I said, what do you know about your Stowe charging stuff? And she had their general manager send an email with a whole bunch of detail, which I forwarded on to one of our board members and said, this is what they do in Stowe. Maybe we should research this. And anyway, that got me invited to a Hardwick Electric board meeting where there was a little discussion. And the upshot of that was, well, maybe in fact Hardwick Electric could put in just one of those units that charges brakes and charges two cars. I believe that's the way they're sold. There's like a single unit and they go yeah. feeds two places. If you know if we, the town, had a parking lot with two spots that was near a electrical service that was appropriate, maybe we could work together and make something happen. Haven't we had these discussions job, though but... when we were on the list of towns that, that were going to be able to benefit from happen. the state program of places? Who was that? Yeah. So, we're how is once it you alone. <laughs> okay, so Sherry asked a good question. How is it different from um, the when... private developer funded by the state grant um, who was supposed to do five towns, one of them was Hardwick? But we couldn't, they couldn't even work with Hardwick Electric because of their. Uh, Whatever those the demand charges. The demand charges were not so work. So we can this is something we can try to work through, but my understanding of this proposal is that we would try to work with them and essentially we would what you know what we could contribute is we think this is a good place mm -hmm. and we actually own this parking lot or whatever. Like, you know, for example, like we could contribute that and they could contribute and may, oh, and we could also maybe contribute um, our community development coordinators' grant writing skills if we needed to write a grant to, for the actual charger. But hard, what Hardwick Electric could do is they could do the hookup, and they could do the maintenance, and they could um, get it set up. So in this case, the way it's different is there is no private developer. Mm -hmm. Hardwick Electric would put the thing in, mm -hmm. and they and um, the way Stowe does it is they. They basically contract out the all the fees. And we're doing this so that there's a charger that is reduced fee. Is that the just so that there's a charger downtown? Yeah, yeah. There, there is a downtown. Well, that's the discussion. Where do we do well, it? So I think, and he's not here to speak, but Opie and Mike had worked on locations. So we probably should wait on on that till he's back. But one of the things they threw out in the Hardwick Electric meeting was they thought the parking lot across the road from the co-op was very nice for them because they have power right there. Mm -hmm. power. The issue. Well, anyway, yeah. And that, that, that probably There's also the place. lot right by the clip joint too, which is needs an overhaul and there's a power source right Ooh, there. That Except that uh, our hope downtown anyway is that that actually gets developed. And into a building? Into a building. Okay. That has housing. Building back there. Yeah. That has some housing. Oh. Yeah. Storefront and housing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Why are we doing that? I like that. Idea. But anyway, anyway, this is a huge. Let us know when it's done. Just saying. Sure, I got a project for you. No problem downtown. So it sounds like um, that this is great, and that maybe we can make it happen. So, yeah. So the whole point of just putting this on the agenda is to bring it to everyone's attention, and probably we could discuss it when we have our joint meeting with them. Great. But if if I <coughs> couldn't speak for everyone, but I did say that I thought. Given our past history, our past discussions, I thought everybody. Now this is a it's fast a, charger. 
It probably would be, uh, I think, what they call level two, which is not the super I fast still one. Have a, 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 I don't know, logistics or a mechanical issue or whatever we're calling here uh, about tying up two parking spaces downtown for eight hours. So maybe there's a limit, maybe it's only you know two saying, hours. I think that should be, well, I don't know how it works. I'm just, that's right. Well, we have to have that discussion. But you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, our parking in the, in the, down in, right there in the middle of town, like, you know. Yeah. To have that long, a long term parking. But. Yeah, I don't know what the parking the limits are. There. Okay, so we're going to have a couple of people downtown, hopefully in the near future, that are driving electric cars, right? One would think in the summer so we might have some tourists be, that might want to. Yeah, so I, I'm not against it. I'm just trying to figure out that. Think it through. Think uh, it through as far as our limited parking. I hope you also on. mentioned that, you know, across the street, so where Grace is, that maybe there's something could be negotiated. So that's a, that that's a parking that is just not. Just because utilized. they have the power's well. there, because Richard had the power. So, so just to, I, I guess I didn't, in, I didn't, I didn't intend tonight for us to necessarily come up with uh, a lot yep. of solutions. I just wanted to kind of. And did they happen to mention anything about the the charging that they plan to put in their parking lot? Um, so. Because the last time I asked about that, Mike said it was when they got some kind of problem with the they have to retaining, retaining, wall. retaining wall, right? But buddy, the builder can't come do it right now. Uh -huh. so, yeah. so because Vinny can't come to work, to, He's, yeah. so, Vinny's in Florida, so sounds, down sounds down like down, if so. we're having a meeting in a couple of weeks, this is yeah, a good agenda. Yeah, and maybe Sweet. this is something we can work together on, and nice we can make something happen. Yep, great. Okay. Clearly, that good. Jeff guy's a no show. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> He just texted me and uh, he said, "Don't bother." The internet's not working. I told him that you motioned for him. Yeah, I that the internet's not working, and he started. So surprising, Montgomery uh -huh. Road. You could we could hook it up for forty grand. Really? <laughs> wow! That, that's the quote we got from, uh, from Prince Casey Casey said that the fiber wow. people took the ARPA money, right? They put in the request. They put in the request. So <laughs> so they they should be so building fiber, but not on your road. road. My daughter's going to her place first. Above me there. Yeah. It cost them $2,000 to get it there. And you can see the like oh, right there. Yeah. It still cost her two grand. That's All right. Is. Ne next is select board reports. I have one. Yeah, I thought so. The townhouse is going to be opening sometime Tomorrow. pretty soon. Yeah. Tomorrow. Technically, <coughs> yeah. And our first event that's scheduled is the, uh, uh, the George Woodard um. screening of his film, The Farm Boy, which is... He's the guy in... He's from Waterbury, right? Yeah, yeah. the Waterbury guy yeah. who did a film. So that's going to be on March 31st at 6.30. And beyond that, maybe there'll be some other things that come up, but that's our first event. For March this 31st. Mm -hmm. That okay. sign looks so good every time I drive by that sign. I'm glad you like it. No, it really does. It looks nice. And, and, really and nice. Annie Houston goes and changes the little stuff on there <laughs> and puts little no, it messages. It it's nice. all good. Yeah, it does. Very, it's classy. No, cla very classy, yes. Yeah, so I'm glad you like it. I had a quick one, uh, select board report to you that the equity committee last month had a um, an equity listening session at uh, Frenzy Coffee, which was um, really fun. The goal is to basically provide a space for people to come and just talk about successes and challenges in Hardwick. And we're planning on having our next one at the Buffalo Mountain Market on March 19th. Um, I'm not totally sure on the time yet. Um, but the goal is to, again, just have a monthly place for people in the community to come and share stories and things that are working well great. and not working well. Great. Yeah. Good. That sounds like a great thing. Can Liz? I have a history minute? Mm -hmm. uh, you may. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm delighted, Casey, that we have the estimated grand list in here, which is $195 million. So that our tax, I can figure that our proposed property taxes, we're being taxed at approximately 1.4% of our grand list rating. In 1863, the select board in the town meeting, not select board, in Hardwick voted to tax themselves at 25% of the grand list. 1860? 1863. 
25% of the grant list, we are paying 1.4% of the grant list. So it's right during the Civil War? It's right in the middle of the Civil War, yeah. Huh. That's when they were building the beautiful opera house. Just, huh. just to compare things. Yeah, crazy. Crazy, crazy. Um, uh, I have a report. Um, the Yellow Barn project is proceeding. Yay! What does that mean? You've been saying that for a <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to say something. You and the flight department come on the same way. Breaking ground in May, according to Allison on last Saturday. Yep. Breaking ground in May. Hopefully, Very short. hopefully yeah. signing. Uh, we have, there's a draft contract that's being reviewed by lawyers right now with Wright and Morrissey. Hopefully, we get that done. They're going to be the general. Probably. They're going to be the general. Um, there's local guys who are some of the subs, um, and they're uh, <coughs> yes. New building, new building retro the old building. Rented the. The old the barn is going to be completely renovated, and the three sides, sort of facing the road, are all going to look very much like they do now, except better. Yeah. Restored. <laughs> Restored. Right. The back side, facing the rail trail, is going to have a lot of glass. It's oh, going to have a lot uh, of patio and like a patio. The deck and, area yeah. To see and then the. Set, set my side here on the rail trail people. Eat some cheese. <laughs> and uh, the new building is going to sit where the Greensboro Garage like parts cars were on the yeah yeah I don't know that fill yes uh, unfortunately all that fill is being taken away and replaced with real there yeah yeah where are they doing with that I don't know do you have an idea yeah you do for sure yeah okay <laughs> we're going to talk after yeah we should especially start in May oh we bastard perfect. <laughs> And gravel is doing the site work. Perfect. We got it. Okay. Yeah. He said perfect That's a side twice. <laughs> I swear, okay. when I find dirt, like that, when I find a pile of dirt like that, right next. Not to only is there dirt, Danny, but there's a bridge in there too. So there's I have a bridge um, in there. I have. Jerry? A, Interesting. Cool. I have additional. I have additional copies of that yellow barn flyer that Allison oh, yeah. provided yep. for the business conference. I'll bring to town meeting and have that in the um, lobby. Great, thank you. So great. if people want to pick it up and read all about it. Yeah, that's awesome. Other select board reports? Jesus, I'm excited. <laughs> uh, new business, old business? I don't know if it's new business or old business, but I just wanted to remind people that at town meeting in the lobby, we're going to have, SE Group is putting together our um, the the boards stuff. for the park. Oh, well, the park on the, the far side The two park bridge. concepts. So we want to hope, we're hoping to get feedback from people on the two concepts that we that have been developed oh. so far. Um, there's going to be a survey there and then eventually it'll get on to the town website as well. But hopefully people who want to like physically like write on the board and say what they think about it all. Oh come to town meeting and do that. Great. Then you won't have to go online. My uh, old business, new business is tied to town meeting too. And just recapping some of the comments that we heard in the um, previous meeting about yeah. maybe, especially if there's information about the Yellow Barn and other town projects, having a board or somewhere posted about reappraisals happening <coughs> roughly you know, expect, expected 2024, 2025, something like that. Um, and then also either adding some numbers to this existing report about the gravel pit purchase. Mm -hmm. um, or another page. Or doing another page yep. or having that be like available for people to read as they come in. Just especially thinking about how people are there at various times and might not be there for the very end <laughs> to, mm -hmm. hear, to hear the discussion. Sounds good. That's a good idea. And this is so exciting. This is our like, first in-person town meeting in, in a, years. In a long time. So hopefully we get a good turnout. And hopefully there is somebody doing snacks. Food. Lunch. I know it's every day I have no snacks. I don't know snacks. <laughs> <laughs> no, usually somebody, usually the elementary school does, yeah, right? Oh, in the hallway? No, on the, in the, cafeteria. up on the cafeteria. I don't, they're on vacation, so I don't. They're always on vacation, though. Uh, we, yeah. Well, town meeting. Not that we, it's not yeah. usually the school. It's so always scouts. Oh, it is? I got a new project Scout. to share. <laughs> really? I'm John this year. Mm. So why in all this housing crisis we're in, and no, not for you, it's 
Uh, the I'll is, take it. Yeah, I know. You're the one that might be able to make it move. Um, all this talk about housing, I, what I see is no effort being put into the, all the single family houses that are in the village that have fallen into disrepair, small, you know, small single family, small lot uh, village homes that used to be filled with some of them have not been wealthy renovated. people, you know what I'm saying, middle class folks that want to live in the village next to the schools. But I see these things just falling down and nothing happening to them, just like that lot on Main Street. I think that's, that's a perfect place to build something. You know, mm -hmm. nobody wants sprawl, nobody wants development, nobody wants any of this, but I see no effort statewide in redeveloping, just like those guys that came to us. They want new construct, new fancy, you get all kinds of money to build new fancy shit. Well, but so why don't they have a program that... Well, they do, the state, yeah, there, there are a couple of programs that help, that homeowners can get up to $50,000 to do the accessory dwelling thing um, in order to create a, a rental unit on their property. Yeah, the, I don't know. But, the, you know we've I'm, changed some of the, the bylaws around that, you know, right. that, that whole thing. Well, anything that could be made into a multi-unit, any of the bigger houses, the while housing went out and swiped them out, made apartment houses out of them because they're money makers. But you know, I'm talking about all these little places like, you know, there's, they're little everywhere. Little privately owned. Yeah, there's yeah. little privately owned houses that literally set on a lot, you know. That, yeah. Um, there, so. there is, I mean, Efficiency Vermont, it's probably not super helpful, but Efficiency Vermont does have some money for yeah. renovations that in most but renovations include. more about there needs to be, you know, some money available to these guys that are developing these new projects. Mm. They should be made to clean up some of these. I mean, I'm a firm Renovate believer in the moment fighting with Act 250 that I do in development and hearing and being engaged and understanding it pretty well. Um, you know, the whole concept of building more housing in the village areas or in, in mm -hmm. towns and, you know, mm -hmm. versus out, out in the country, it, it makes huge sense. The infrastructure's here. It's not being utilized. I mean, we should be building houses over here, I think, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. the other part is where are we at with that? Ah, uh, town garage. The, the study or whatever. We're, we're waiting to get a survey of the land, aren't we, down here? No, no. Didn't we? I don't know if we, we don't know if we've gotten the grant yet. We applied for the We're grant. waiting for the feasibility study. The feasibility no, study. We haven't heard the answer on that yet. Yeah. So we're going to get that soon. Uh, Tracy's been working on it. You should stop and see her. Yeah, there's just a lot. I just can't remember it all. You know, all That's of a sudden it's going to be a year's gone by. Mm -hmm. Again. Again. And we also haven't heard back from Rescue of what they found out when they did theirs. Oh, right. So what would be great is if we could hear back Maybe from them. Maybe we could open to poke them. Maybe All right, we have a comment. Can you, sorry, can you tell me your name again? I've forgotten. Steve Jenny. Steve. I like your, I'm sorry, I forgot to say it, pronounce your name. Kaylee. Don't. Whatever, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah Kaylee's I've been like, called worse, Steve. <laughs> yeah, that's why I didn't even attempt it. <laughs> it scares me. <laughs> when I look at it. I'm hey, like, you. <laughs> anyway, I like your, what, your comments about posting a few things over town meeting. It would be very beneficial. And second, regarding something you said, a question for Casey. What did, can you give me an update on the fiber system? What is ARPA doing? The, are the funds potentially oh. going to? Market? So there were um, funds that the select board allocated to Northeast Kingdom Broadband specifically that. for hardware. <clears throat> um, and what we're saying is that they recently requested that those funds be dispersed. Um, so that presumably means that they're going to be starting work in hardware. So, yeah, and they had proposed, I think. West Hill is on the list. Pumpkin Lane. Pumpkin Lane. There were three There's different project areas, I think, right, that they proposed, and we said, yeah, let's do them all. Not Montgomery. Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately. So but there were, yeah, three, they had identified three areas that had a bunch of homes that didn't have good internet service now, and they thought they could get, at a, you know, get fiber optics out there at a reasonable pace and cost, and, and so we we did allocate funding for that. And I don't, was that a roughly three year, three years? Was that kind of the, I think they were saying three years as the time, time frame. The, like, if we gave them this money, it would accelerate their 
installation of this in Hardwick by sure about a year and a half or so. You were at the we should ask day. Paul to come back. Yeah, well, that's, well, yeah that's a good idea. Yeah. We'll get an update from our representative to that board now that you remind us. Right after town meeting. I mean, it'd be good to yeah, we'll have get a, Paul Fix to come back. We have to appoint a representative at the yeah. organizational meeting anyway. Well, maybe he can, yeah, maybe he can give a us a report. All right. Anything else for the board tonight? Motion to adjourn? Yeah. Adjourn. See you at town meeting. Yes. <laughs> You're against it, the adjournment. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.